Hello again, Pastor Michael Jarbo here. Welcome to another edition of Soul Care, conversations to help renew the spirit. I'm glad you're here. Check out today's episode. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Soul Care. I'm Pastor Michael Jarbo at Memorial Drive United Methodist Church, and this is the first Soul Care of 2021, and I have the distinct pleasure of being with Dr. Jennifer Blaine, the superintendent of Spring Branch ISD here in the great city of Houston. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? I'm doing well. All good here in the branch, for sure. <laughs> I feel like I can call you Jennifer because you Yeah, you remember. please do. Okay. Yes. Because you worship yes. here at, at uh, the Journey and at MUMC. Right. So it is, uh, it's like uh, seeing a, a good friend. So thank you yep. for your time today and your very busy schedule. You are most welcome. I can't think of a better way to spend the time. Awesome. So let me ask you, uh, just kind of open up with sharing how... Uh, I mean, you could go probably for, for a couple hours on how you got where you are today, but just share your, how you found education as a passion and uh, just a little bit about yourself and, and your family as well. So I honestly, so when I, what I thought I wanted to do was be a pediatrician. Wow. So actually, so I love kids. So I knew I was going to do something where I was able to work with kids, but I quickly realized that I, I don't think that, um, I think Lots of times pediatricians have great experiences and they cure kids, but there are other times when that's not the outcome. And I honestly, my heart is so big for kids. I don't think I could do that part of the job. So um, I got into teaching and very quickly, I mean, I loved it. I started my career in Aldine and I was there for 10 years okay. um, and, I've, and I really wanted to make a bigger impact, which is why I decided to go the administration route. I loved the principalship. I spent 10 years in Aldine. Um, I'm on my 21st year here in Spring Branch. Um, I came here actually as an elementary principal over Spring Branch Elementary okay. and um, met my husband through, um, so at church, I was, we were actually at Chapelwood um, because I had Chapelwood. I know, I know, I know. No, I, I, yeah, I, but I quickly learned. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Chapelwood volunteers were fabulous. So they're over at Spring Branch Elementary. They're still yeah, there. Anyway, so they convinced me to switch churches and, and come from where I was where I was over near Aldine to over here. So anyway, I met my husband and uh, married him. And anyway, I, you know, I kind of, um, I knew I wanted to be a superintendent uh, pretty early on in my principalship. I absolutely loved it. And um, someone told me one time that being a superintendent is, is like being a principal and the principals are your teachers. So it's just like being at a different level, but it's like being a principal. So um, over the years, I've served as an elementary principal, an area superintendent. I was over, I was the associate superintendent over curriculum for seven years. And then I was over administ administration and operations. And then I picked up human resources as well. So really the only thing I haven't done is to be the CFO. So I, I don't have a finance and I don't need to be over the finances. So right. I know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> but um, anyway, so so that's kind of how I got where I, where I, I mean, and I, I love Spring Branch. I, you know, um, I really wanted to be the superintendent here. I mean, it really wasn't about being a superintendent. It was about being a superintendent in a place that I was passionate about because it's not an easy job. Um, and you know, it comes with lots of, lots of, um, lots of balancing of plates. And so, um, I couldn't imagine doing this anywhere else, especially like during this time. Um, personally, I have one child. So Will and I, uh, got married in, um, gosh, 2003 in October. And we brought home Chris one year later to the day. Like he was the first year anniversary gift. Wow. So, yes, so we had him pretty quickly in, and he uh, he just turned 16. He's over at Stratford, oh. and um, that's that's it in a nutshell. So we're cool. we're animal lovers. We have three dogs and a cat, which my husband says is probably over the homeowners association rules, but we won't tell anybody that. Um, I'm not allowed to have any more pets, <laughs> but I would love more pets. Yeah, um, so that's it. That's that's who we are. That's, that's who beautiful. I am. That, I love it. And uh, yeah, your, uh, two things. Your Facebook shows you love your pets. Uh, I get to see all your, your animals. It's awesome. You, you show them up. And, and I want to say your, your transparency on, face, on Facebook makes you so approachable. Oh, and thank you. Know, you. Parents and teachers and, uh, and even students. And so thank you for doing that as a, someone who lives here in Spring Branch, for you to be able to show that transparency. It's great. And number two, for the record, Chapelwood's a great church. 
but we're well. <laughs> this is, this the is, Reverend is, Clam would be very upset with me, you know. Oh yes, Trump, yes, he's Reverend Clam, fabulous. Oh yes, he is. I, I can't. I ha have to have to take care of my Chapelwood peeps. Of course. So let me ask you. You know, this pod, uh, podcast, uh, Zoom cast, whatever you want to call it, started um, from a place of last March, April, uh, when when COVID, there was so much mystery about COVID and mm -hmm. people were at home constantly. I mean, obviously being a superintendent of a school district, I can't imagine, and you sort of share with me just sort of the stresses of it all and how we're gonna navigate a, the fall semester and, and going on. So there was so much going on. It felt like every capacity of people's um, lives were just taken over by this mm -hmm. pandemic. Uh, especially if they want to be safe and school districts have to be safe and all that they do. And so this podcast came about by people, by just saying, how are people caring for themselves? Or we might even go into, as, as Christians say, how are you caring for your soul um, mm -hmm. during this time? So just like, can you just tell us how, how did you as a superintendent of a very large school district um, care for yourself during that time and don't feel like you're sounding uh, selfish or uh, you know it's like we want to hear how did you care for yourself and your soul during that period of time well Seth that is a great question so I thought a lot about that I think first of all you know and it was it was hard so I've, I've been here 21 years and I think we've all seen people people are in crisis and they're still in crisis but but then when people didn't really know what the landscape was like or you know didn't know a lot about the virus. It was, pe people were really scared. And so, um, you know, I, I try to remember, so I think the, I, so first of all, a mindset. So I had a really, um, because th it was, it was rough. And I know, you know, that you and I texted many times and I can't tell you how appreciative I was of your support just to get a text, hang in there. We're praying for you. We're behind you because I needed that. Um, that was very helpful. I'm a strong person, but I got to tell you, there were a couple of times I thought to myself, if I didn't love my community as much as I do, and these kids, I just don't know if I would do this because it's really hard. Yeah. Um, so I try to say center on centered on why I do what I do. So I do love kids. Um, you know, I, I mean, kids are amazing. You know, there's just so much potential in everybody's child. And so I try to remember why I do what I do um, and keep that at the center of, of my thinking. Also, um, I think in the, at the time tried to remember that this is not personal because it was hard. You know, people are lashing out and they've lost their jobs. They uh, may be losing family members. Uh, their kids are not in school. I myself as a parent, uh, putting my parent hat on, watched my own son go from being a straight A student to like not turning anything, I mean, anything in. And my husband and I are not there during the day. I saw him um, his, I felt like his mental health and social emotional wellness was not in a place where we wanted it. So I understood as a parent, however, how they felt. So when people lashed out and they did, and, and you know, we, we took a lot of heat. They're trying to, trying to get school up and running. I just tried to remember that, you know what, these are parents and parents love their kids and we can all get crazy over our kids, you know, because we love them and we want the best for them. And so just trying to remember why I do what I do and that it's really not about me. I mean, a lot of people didn't know me. A lot of people did, but a lot of people didn't. And so they were saying things, but they don't really know me. So it's not really personal. So try to take my, the personal side out of it oh, and just remind myself, these are parents who are scared. Yeah. And so, um, so, so I think that was part of it. And then, you know, I, you know, my mom told me one time, and it may have been my dad, my parents, one of my parents told me one time, um, that, you know, uh, I like to control things. And I know that's probably shocking <laughs> to anybody who's listening, but I do, I can't help myself, but you know, you can't control everything. So you can't, you know, they told me one time, you know, you just, you really cannot control what other people do or what they say or how they react. The only thing you can control is how you respond to it and what your oh, behaviors are. Golly. Boy, I'll tell you what, there were times I wanted to say and do things that would not have been nice or Christian-like, and I would never have done them, but I just tried to remember, like, this is not how I, this is not who I am, this is not how I'm going to respond, um, and so that, that's always helpful. Um, I will not lie to you, I, um, I mean, I, <clears throat> you know, I pray every day, I try to think about something I'm grateful for every day, I try to think, there's one thing, there's a little thing that I'm grateful for, but um, I talk to God a lot. And I do that anyway in the car, you know, but, um, but during this period in time, <coughs> a lot, so sorry. Um, 
and then I try to, um, I try to, you know, think of, I try to do things that are not school. So I think that in my head, I, I guess that would be my first answer that those are the things I try to keep, stay centered on. And then I'm very fortunate to have a family and a group of a family and a group of friends that, you know, are super supportive. I have a, a, a friend of mine, um, Sarah Cronin, I'll say her name, she'll probably kill me, um, <laughs> who I have walked with every morning since I think our boys were in, I don't know, first grade. Wow. Um, and that's very helpful because, you know, we can just say anything to each other and you have to have that person that you can just say what you need to say to and you know it doesn't go any further. Oh. So I'm fortunate to have those friends. I have several friends that are like that. Um, I happen to see her a lot more often than I do some of the others. Um, and then I try to do things that, you know, I, I mean, I could stay at this job 24 hours a day and it wouldn't get done. So at some point you have to just say, you know what, the list is going to be there when you get back, go home. Go home. So I try to go home at a decent time. It doesn't always happen, but I do try a couple of times a week to go home at a decent time and spend time with my family. Um, and just, you know, uh, and I like to read. So, um, there are things I, I do to relax. I exercise. So. I guess all of that is kind of how yeah. I gotten through it. And, and, you know, I would say we're not really on the other side of it, but people are in a, a, a better place in terms of school. Sure. Um, and so, but, but I still worry about um, the social emotional wellness of our, of our people, not just our kids, but our families. Cause I think it's still really rough on a lot of people. Oh man. There's so much to unpack from that answer. It's so mm -hmm. good because yeah, there's not just one thing. You listed right. multiple things and you could probably list a few more if you had more yep. time and, and looking at all the experience you had. And then to just, you know, I just think about it. You, I mean, you had from student to parent, to teacher, mm -hmm. to administrator, all four with different forms of grief, mm -hmm. none the same, all right. due to you. Mm -hmm. to give them some sort of care and so mm -hmm. it's just like if you don't care for yourself Jennifer there's no way you can care for those others right that's right and and, and or even attempt even attempt to care for right. those others because then you're gonna you're you're on fumes trying to care for somebody who, who's on fumes and there's no way yep. that could be done so I just I applaud you it's one of those things you can't even wrap your mind around when you think of the number of people that you help to lead every single day. Uh, oh, thank you. So thank you for your- I have experience. a great team. I really do. They're, they're amazing. Yeah, it's awesome and, and awesome. I'm proud of you. That's so cool. It's so incredible. Um, speaking of students and families, uh, Jennifer, I, I, I do, I, and, and probably folks who are listening will probably maybe hear some of the things you've said before on this question, but I just want to kind of reiterate, like what are you telling families, students to do to care for themselves? Um, you know, in, in, in the best light possible? What, what's been your kind of go-to there? So, um, you know, we really, so I think the, the thing that concerns me most about the kids specifically, but they're, they're the parents as well, is really that whole social emotional health. Yeah. So um, we're fortunate. We now have 76% of our kids that are back in person. And so we can lay an eye, we lay eyes, eyes on them every day, which I'm much more comfortable with uh, to make sure they're okay. You know, um, never mind the academic piece, but you know, what we've tried to tell parents is that, first of all, if you need anything at all, we're here. So we're connected with resources. I mean, MDUMC, Chapelwood, like there's a plethora of services out there that we're connected with. CIS, um, the Family Development Center over by Panda Path, uh, over by Hollybrook. So we can, we can get you to resources. And if you need something, please don't hesitate to reach out. But what, uh, what we tell parents is that, um, you know, routine is important. So, um, and I was a little guilty of this in the spring just because I was trying to manage this job 24 seven and I wasn't really checking on my own child, right. which is where we got in a place where neither one of my husband and I were comfortable with him because his routine was completely gone. So I would say to parents, routine is important. And so even if they're an online learner, you know, we have to establish routines and patterns and making sure we're checking in just like we would any other school year. Um, you know, luckily we live in Houston, the weather's usually pretty decent, right. so go outside, get some exercise. And even though you can't necessarily, you may not be able to spend time with other people, depending on your situation. Some people are comfortable with that socially distanced and masked. And so if you're comfortable with that, the doctors say that that's okay. Yeah. 
you're not comfortable with that, then find another way to connect with people. You know, the, the good thing about this pandemic, I mean, I, you, the silver lining is that we really have found a lot of ways to do things more efficiently and effectively, like this Zoom right here. You know, we didn't know how to do this before the pandemic. Now it's become kind of a way of doing business. So there are ways you can connect with your family and your friends, and we, we want people to do that. Um, you know, and just, again, if they, you know, I, all of that's important, you know, just maintain as much normalcy as you can. And, and it may not look the same as what it's looked before. Um, it can look differently and be just as good. And if families are having a hard time figuring out how to do that, we, we can help them with that. So that's what I would say. We, we are blessed, Spring Branch ISD, to have so many resources, right? I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's just we really do. And, and it, it's so good. You know, I had a thought, like, um, and, and tell me <laughs> tell me if I'm stepping over the line, but I wonder what one of your son's teachers, when they have uh, a, a, a parent-teacher conference, like, <laughs> they're, your, your son's, you know, your son, you're the parent of your son, and teacher's like, oh, this is my boss's boss's boss. Like, uh, have you found yourself in those situations uh, at all? Well, well, yes. Now, we threaten Chris pretty good. So, and the teachers know it. So we, we tell the teachers, listen, he, he is, he does not, he's nobody. He's Chris Blaine and he's not, a, you know, he doesn't get to pull rank. <laughs> I will tell you, he did do something that I was speaking of Zoom and different and better ways to do things that I could have killed him for. So I won't say the class or the teacher, but this okay. poor teacher was very sweet that she did not contact me because if she had, he would have been in a ton of trouble. But I noticed that during one of his classes, he actually was, had shut, gone to the, so he goes to the golf course every day at 1.30 for, for golf. He's in that yep. class. Yep. But I noticed that um, Life 360 was moving down I-10 and turning on Highway 6 towards the golf course at Pine Forest at 12.30. And so I thought, hmm. So I called him. He doesn't answer. Mm -hmm. I text him. He doesn't answer. Um, so I'm like, okay. So my husband doesn't, I called him. He, we don't know what he's doing. Um, and so I thought I'm going to have to go home and see if he's there. Like he's not supposed to be at the golf course till 1:45. Well, I got a text from another parent saying with a laughing emoji, "Oh, are you aware that Chris is in blank yeah. class? Yeah, and he's on the golf course on the driving range, and he's zooming from there." So um, yeah, so I mean, that's I'm not, not, I'm not laughing. laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> That's not the creativity that I'm talking about, but he did take a, a class period. He claims he was being efficient with his time, but yeah, he, he set the Chromebook up on a chair and turned his video on and participated as he hit golf balls on the golf driving range. So um, I was dreading that phone call, but I never got it. Wow. So, wow. yeah. Uh, so you deal my, with you deal with the meta problems of the district, the big ones, and then you've got micro problems of your 16-year-old. Listen, during class. I, to all those parents out there, I feel your pain. I, mean, mm. I do it too at home. And yes. he, I, we love him to death. He's a great kid, but sometimes oh. it, is, it is. All right, a little bit more introspection for you, uh, Jennifer. Um, what is this quarantine and uh, pandemic really taught you about yourself? Um, just a, as a person. Um, what, what, what have you learned about yourself? You know, I, there were times early on that I just, I didn't know whether we were going to, we were going to make it out to the other side. And it, and it wasn't just spring branch. Like I was talking with superintendents across the region four area where we would literally, you know, it, we were all dealing with it. It wasn't just me, but I, you know, um, there was a turning point, um, in, uh, I would say it was probably mid July for me where I just, decided enough is enough. We have to figure out how to get this done. And no more whining, no more complaining, no more, not that we were doing that, but I mean, I'm talking about myself more just in my head. Right. You know, we gotta, I gotta stop this, we can get this done. And so um, I think it's, it's really, I mean, I've always believed if you set your mind to something, you can get it done. And I've been faced with challenges in the past, but this by far has been one of the biggest ones I've ever been faced with. And so I had to really tell myself that again, um, but I just, you know, if you put your mind to it and you, and, and put your faith in God, I mean, uh, I, I knew that he was with me and I knew that he would not steer me wrong and, um, we would get to the other side. And once I finally got my head in that space, there was no stopping us. I knew we were going to be okay, but we had to get, I had to get there first. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you for that honesty and transparency. I know that's not easy to do. And I can't imagine, besides the text messages last summer, uh, about your just your your evenings and mornings and just the, the amount of stress. But thank you for your honesty. And yes. um, you find a deeper inner strength. And sometimes it's one of those strengths, you know, we talk about the church that passes our understanding. And then you look on the other side, like, how did I muster the strength? Mm -hmm. uh, to do what I did, uh, and, and we, we, if you, you know, spiritually, we, we turn to God mm -hmm. and say, well, thank yes. you for God giving us for the, sure. the power and strength, and even the fortitude to, to step above what we saw as a hurdle and to move forward, so mm -hmm. that's so good. Okay, last question before the speed round, okay? Okay. okay. Uh, so the, the, na the name Soul Care also stems from John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, would ask all of his pastors that he kind of helped to send out, he would check in with them and say, how is it with your soul? Which is a, a slightly different than saying, how are you doing, right? right. Um, how is it with your soul? And so Dr. Blaine or Jennifer, I ask you today, um, how is it with your soul today? Um, it, I, it, it's great. Honestly, I feel blessed. I feel fortunate. Um, I feel like, you know, God puts you in places where he needs you at just the right time. And, um, I feel like, um, we've done really a good, we've done great on behalf of kids and families. It's not perfect, but I feel good about what, um, our spring branch family has come together to do. So I, I feel great. Oh, awesome. Thank you. That's so good. And let me tell you, uh, the responses to that question over the course of almost a year that we've been doing this have been all over the place. And so, um, and that's the beauty of this question. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, yep. it, uh, good, good stuff. All right. Rapid fire round. Okay. I'm ready. You, you did it. And uh, I know, I know folks who are listening will be excited to hear some of these answers that you're going to give uh, uh, for this rapid fire. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you. You answer as long as you need, okay. and we'll go all the way down all 10 questions, and then we'll close out. All right, here okay. we go. In one word, fill in the blank. Life is... Crazy. <laughs> you are called to be brave in a moment, but you feel the fear inside of you begin to kind of well up. What's the first thing you do? I take a deep breath, and I remember God is with me. I do. What is something people often get wrong about you? Before people get to know me, they think I am a very serious, uh, intimidating person, but I'm actually uh, love to have a good time. I'm a big prankster and um, I'm really not like that at all, but I think I might come across that way before you get to know me. I gotta add, I knew you as the sort of like lighthearted, funny, just like uh, energetic person first. And then mm -hmm. came in and spoke to one of our women's ministry events as superintendent. And I was like, whoa. Because <laughs> you can also put on, I mean, not, not serious, but you can just put on, you know, leadership and power and stuff. And it was really a cool. Thank you. I in the back of the room and you're like, yes. oh, hey, Michael. And you're like, oh, I know. Yeah. And then you're like, <laughs> back to it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a rock star I'm watching right here. So uh, thank you. So so good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, what is the last TV show you binged and loved? Downton Abbey. Ooh, good one. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a favorite movie? Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> it's an 80s flick. Those 80s movies, you just, you just don't get better than, than those. You're probably too young for that. Well, but it's a it's fun. I've, I've seen Revenge of the Nerds. It's just, you know, yeah, it's, it's something special. to, to All kind of silly. <laughs> it's such a good, good pick. Um, what's a concert that you'll never forget? The first concert I went to, I was 12 years old. I went with a friend of mine and her parents. I went to see Chicago mm -hmm. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was really good. I never, didn't even know what to expect from a concert. It was just really, I was mesmerized. It was amazing. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Chicago. Um, what are you reading right now? So I just finished a book that's called, um, Just Mercy and it's by Brian Stevenson. And I, I didn't know there was a movie. I'd actually never heard of it. It popped up on my, my, uh, Amazon reading yeah. list. Yeah. It was, it was eye opening. Yeah. Very, really good. And the, the, the movie I think has Michael B. Johnson in it or, um, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, the movie came out about a year ago or right before uh -huh. 
right before movies mm -hmm. <laughs> stopped, right? Yeah, uh, I, I had never heard of it. And I, it, was, it was hard to read at times, but it was very eye-opening and just um, really speaks to why, you know, we owe it to our kids to make sure that they're educated and they know how to um, advocate for themselves and, and reach out and find the right assistance, you know, should they need it in our families. So it was good, really good. All right, question eight. What's a snapshot of a moment in your life that brings you joy? I, I mean, I have to say it's probably the scariest moment as well. This is the day I became a mother wow. and um, realized I had this little person that I was now responsible for, you know? Um, it, was, it was scary, but, I, and you know, my mom had always told me when we would misbehave and we would get in trouble for it at home, my brother and I, you know, my mom would always say, you know, you just don't understand if anything ever happened to either one of you, I, I would never, I couldn't m move on. It's terrible. And she, and she used to say, and one day when you have your own kids, you're going to understand what I'm, what I'm saying. And, and the minute you hold them for the first time, you, you get it. Wow. So oh. definitely becoming a mom. Good answer. 16 years ago. Pretty cool. 16 years pretty, ago. Pretty cool. All right. Question number nine. Tell me one thing you're deeply grateful for right now. Uh, I, you know, I'm deeply grateful that I am grounded in my faith and I'm grateful that I grew up um, in the church and understanding faith and, and how, you know, we have to really, or I feel for me anyway, really relying on that in difficult times. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always grateful for that, but I'm very grateful for that now because I feel like it, it's, it is how I have gotten through this um and gotten to the other side awesome last question coming into home plate yep uh when our time here is done on earth what do you hope is the first thing god says to you when you come to heaven you're gonna laugh i just want him to go i thought you'd never get here i'm so excited <laughs> and cheer for me i want to party so that is good. That is a perfect answer and a perfect way to wrap up Soul Care today. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for your time today. And just know, uh, not only me and the other pastors on staff and, and, and others, we're all praying for you. And we're grateful for the hard work that you're doing and supporting our teachers and students. So thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. It's a blessing and a pleasure always to talk to you. You're the best and I appreciate your support. You've been uh, amazing. Thanks. Have a Thank great you. day. Talk All right. You. you too. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out Soul Care. Join us again next week at noon on Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye.